I'm just going to start by just talking about, obviously, the tragic situation with, with Kyrie. I haven't got a chance to uh, speak publicly about it. Um, you know, we're starting training camp, and everyone's excited about that, but I think, you know, that situation puts a lot of things in perspective and definitely makes you realize there's a lot of things that are much bigger than football. Um, so, you know, my deepest sympathies with to his family um, and the families of the, the other two that were other two of his team of his you know, high school teammates who were killed in the accident as well. Um, just look, it was a short time with Kyrie, but um, you know, for me and, and really Durante and the defensive staff, we spent you know quite a bit of time um, with Kyrie during the draft process, starting at the Senior Bowl, meeting him there, spending time with him there. Then Zooms, uh, 30 visit, and then obviously when we had him, got him here, we were really excited about him. Uh, I know me personally, I watched every snap of him last year at Oregon. Um, so I was really excited about uh, coaching him, getting him here. Um, and I think he had a, uh, a bright, bright future. So it's, it, 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 it's still something that gives me a pit in my stomach. Uh, still something that I'm, I'm dealing with internally. Um, you know, like a, like this entire organization is, uh, like I know his family and friends are. Um, but I hope they can take a little comfort in knowing that he, he certainly impacted uh, a lot of people in a very positive way. Um, and, uh, you know, he's going to be missed. And we're going to honor him um, with how we, how, we, how we go about our business on a daily basis. Emphasizing to your players right now, and, and what are you closely evaluating before passing on? Um, you know, I think when you get into training camp, it's all the fundamentals, it's all the little things. You know, at the end of the day, uh, there's a small margin for error in, 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 in NFL games, so it really comes down to the little things. So, um, alignment, footwork, hand placement. Just those fundamentals, those techniques. Um, you know, we had a, a, a conversation yesterday about, um, you know, your eyes and your eyes tell, you know, send a signal to your brain, and your brain tells your body what to do, and your, your, you know, your body does what it's trained to do. So that's what individual technique and fundamentals is about. It's about training your body to react a certain way to whatever movement uh, you're working on that particular day. So. There's a lot of focus on that. Um, our communication, our understanding of the uh, schemes that we're putting in, why we're doing it, uh, how each individual's uh, role within it, why it's important, how it affects other people. I think when you kind of start to get into the nuances of, of, of that in detail, that's what training camp's about because you have the time and uh, on the practice field uh, and in the meeting room to, to really dive in and go through it. You know, I think our staff, um, you know, has done a, good, a great job, you know, really, I'm, you know, I'm talking more OTAs and in the spring, uh, just putting together a curriculum that, you know, we feel like gives the, the players the best opportunity to learn um, and really gain, gain knowledge and understanding. So I know that was a lot. I'm not sure if I really answered your question, but uh, there's a lot going on in training camp. So I, I can't, you know, it's not one or two things. It's like, 75 things going on at the same time and we're trying to um the word's not even evaluate it's more just teach that's what this time's about Ryan kind of talked a little bit the other day about how there's not really a playbook for coaches dealing with something like Kyrie and just kind of trying to get through it emotionally and also lead a team through it is there is that something you've been through before at all or is there a way that you kind of go about kind of doing your job well, trying to grieve and, and process things for him? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a tragic situation. Everyone's gonna grieve and uh, grieve in their own way. Um, I know I'm doing that. Um, you know, as far as with players, you know, there's been some, some situations that I've been through in, in, in my career that are similar. Um, you know, 
Kendrick Norton is one that can you know that comes to mind immediately. Um, but yeah, they're they're you know I think what you what you it puts things in perspective. Um, and what you love to see is the outpouring of support that that's come not just from the people in this team, but really the entire league. Um, I can't tell you how many text messages I got from coaches, you know, throughout the league. Um, so you, you you feel that brotherhood, that fraternity, um, which is what's special about you know coaching and playing in this league. Uh, you know, we're all in this together. Um, but yeah, you know, the grieving part of that. I mean. That's still ongoing. I mean, speaking for myself, you know, I have my moments where, uh, you know, I get down. You know, I mean, it's you know, when you think about all that he had been through to get to this point. You know, that's you know, a lot of what I loved about the player. I mean, I think there's a lot of adversity that goes on, you know, for you know three and a half hours on Sundays that we all love to watch, and you know, for a guy to. Uh, you know, I think part of just my uh, process of evaluating players is, you know, how are they going to deal with adversity? You know, what, where are they going to pull it from? And he's, you know, I think each one of us individually, whenever we're going through something, you know, we think about the times we overcame something else. And it could have nothing to do with football, but, you know, he certainly had some things in his life that, that I thought were uh, going to help him or propel him to um, you know, doing some great things. Right, it's different because it's an injury, but you have Makai Blackman as well. So yeah. another person down for you. How, how um, Have you talked to him, how he's dealing, and how are you guys doing? Yeah, obviously he's, uh, you know, it's a tough injury. Um, and, you know, Tough injury, tough time. He was excited. He had just worked back uh, to get back out here. He worked extremely hard to get out, get back out on the field. You know, he played banged up last year for us. Um, and we, we, you know, I was excited about, uh, you know, watching him come back in year two, more comfortable, more understanding, more knowledge, more experience. Um, I think, you know, I thought we were going to see a, a, a a different version of Makai, a better version of Makai. And quite honestly, I think we'll see that moving forward. And that's what I told him yesterday. Um, to me, I think, you know, 10 years from now, this will be a blip in the, in the you know, uh, but just a bump in the road on, over the course of his journey throughout the NFL. Um, that was my message to him yesterday. Uh, I know he'll attack the rehab and um, get himself back, um, you know, ready to go. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm sure in December he's going to say I'm ready to go, you know, um, or somewhere in there. Um, but, you know, Makai is a fierce competitor. He's very talented. He's exactly what we're looking for in a Viking. And uh, it's a tough loss, you know, and, you know, we all feel it. But he's got a, a great support system with his family, and we're part of that. Um, so we'll be reaching out and checking in on him and making sure he's, he's, he's doing well. Uh, but, you know, it's it's tough for a young guy to really, uh, they put a lot into it and for, you know, it all to kind of get taken away just like that. You know, again, it puts things in perspective, and, but also, you know, for him, uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough for us, but, you know, I'm thinking about him, and I think, uh, but he'll bounce back. Like, that's the kind of kid he is. How does that change about what's, what you have, still have at that position? Um, what you know, I think I like our room. I like everyone at every position. So um, I think right now we're in the process of uh, getting better on a daily basis, uh, working on, you know, our techniques, you know, specific to that room, uh, you know, whether it's man coverage, zone coverage, uh, you know, whatever we're doing on a particular day. Uh, but I like the guys in that room. I think they're competitive. I think they're. I think they're going to work to get better every day. That's really um, what we've talked about, and that's been the message. Um, but we're still going to find out whose roles, um, who's going to find different roles for for themselves. And our job as as coaches to put them in the best position to fit their specific skill set. We'll we'll do our best to do that. Yeah, you 
Yeah. Oh. You talk about uh, position flexibility. Any guy like Van Buchel and Dallas Turner, what, what get guys like that, those kind of pieces, what does that, that allow you to do this year in terms of creativity and using the different spots? I, no, I think you're, you know, we're always looking for guys who can, um, who can play multiple positions. Uh, but really, we're looking for good players. You know, guys who are tough, guys who, um, you know, have instincts, you know, use their hands well. But position flexibility really boils down to, uh, yeah, there's athleticism around it, but it's, you know, intelligence and ability to kind of understand conceptually what we're doing so that, you know, you see, you see the defense and you and I are playing in one position and we can flip and you know what I'm doing, I know what you're doing, and the offense thinks that you're in one spot and somebody else is in another spot. So that's really player to player. Um, I think we got a lot of guys who, who have that ability um, to play multiple roles. Uh, you mentioned Van Ginkle and Cashman. They're, they're, I think they're certainly in that mode, but you know, guys like Metellus and Harry and Bynum, um, on, along the D-line, Harrison Phillips plays you know, several different positions, so does John Bullard. Um, you know, early on in my career, uh, I was told if if you can only do one thing, you better be able to do it very extremely well in this league. So um, most guys can do, you know, one, two, three, four things. So I think those guys are in that boat. You've got some history with Van Ginkle. What do you think he'll bring to this team when he's fully healthy? Uh, toughness. Um, work ethic, leadership. He's a quiet leader. You're not going to hear much from him. Uh, but, you know, he's fun to be around. Uh, he enjoy. he loves playing football. Uh, and that's the one thing about this group that I, that, that I really, you know, when they play together, you can feel that they like playing together, that they enjoy playing together. So, um, and I think that's a strength of, uh, 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 for them um, and us as a team. So, but Van Ginkle's kind of jumped right in and, I think he's done a nice job of just incorporating himself with the group. Um, but, you know, he's got pass rush ability, he can play in coverage, he plays in the kicking game, he's smart. Uh, he's played you know, several different positions over the course of his career. He just wants to play. You know, at the end of the day, he just loves to play. Um, those are the kinds of guys you're looking for. As a defensive guy training against the Vikings offensive line, what do you see when you look at that front up there? It's a, it's a good group. It's a very good group. Um, you know, we start at the tackle position with B.O. and, and uh, the C.D. Uh, you know, tough, athletic, tough to get around those guys. Got to have a plan for them. Um, you know, Garrett's a damn good center. He's smart, tough. I know when we're putting it together, um, you know, let, me, let me talk about Ed and Blake and, and Dalton before somebody says that I didn't talk about them. You know. <laughs> Those are good players too. I mean, I, you know, I just got the time limit, so I'm just, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I mean, I could get into Flax and, and Jurgens and the whole group if you really want me to, but um, I'm not sure that, you know, Carly may, you know, put the clock on me, but it's a, it's a good group. Um, I love hanging out with O'Lyman. For whatever reason, like my, my, my college roommate, or college roommates in, in, uh, at BC were offensive linemen, Augie Hoffman, Rudy DiPietro. Um, they loved that I shouted them out, so that'd be good. Uh, but great friends. I, so, you know, that group, I go over, hang out with them during stretch quite a bit. Um, I love the camaraderie in that room. Uh, I'm with Coop all the time and Sean, Surrett. You know, Coop and my, 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 my kids are, are buddies, so James is always at my house. And you know, our wives are, are, are pretty close too. So, I, you know, I don't know. I've got an affinity for the offensive line and, you know, how they work um, and that connectivity that they have. But I think we got a good group. They, they play well together. They're tough, they're physical. Um, it's a good challenge for us on a daily basis because, you know, you know, individually and collectively, you know, there aren't a lot of, you know, groups and individuals. They give us a good look. Let's, let's put it that way. Brian, uh, Harrison said yesterday, uh, Smith, one thing he 
love about playing for you is that you're not scared to try different things that might be unconventional outside the box. You're not afraid that if they don't work. Is that, is that, have you always been that way, or is that part of coaching that maybe try something that's unconventional from what other people do? Yeah, I think it's, you know, over the years I've, I've, uh, I study a lot of film. Uh, I study a lot of tape. Uh, I watch, you know, different coordinators from LeBeau to, uh, you know, Rex Ryan to Buddy Ryan to Zim. You know, I mean, I could go on and on, but and I'm I'm constantly trying to, you know, stay with the times. There are a lot of things that are in in vogue offensively and defensively, and I try to stay, you know abreast to what's new and what's what's uh what the trends are with through through the league and you know in doing that whether it's pro or college and doing that you kind of see you know different schematics you say that's cool and you, know, you draw it up and i think now is the time to try it you know it's training camp preseason you know if there's something that you know, you draw it up and you draw it up over and over and over again, and it looks like, you know, it, it, you put some rules to it, um, looks like it may work, then I think why not Why not give it a shot? So I'm not afraid to, you know, test things out. Um, you know, calling the game is a different thing, which over the years I've gotten more comfortable doing that. Um, and it's fun. You know, when it works, it's, it's, it's cool, it's fun. It's exciting, it's different, and sometimes you gotta work the kinks out of some things too. You know, hopefully not in game, but it's happened in game too. So um, but yeah. Look, I love coaching football. If you guys can't, you know, don't don't see it, uh, I, I I just I'm very passionate about it. Um, you know, other than spending time with my wife and kids, this is um, you know, I just love being out here. I love being in meetings and walkthroughs and practice. Uh, you know, I enjoy you know putting them under 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 uh, some stress because it's a stressful game. Uh, so I try to do that in practice. Um, I just I just love everything about it. So I'm excited to be here and you know excited to spend time with you guys too. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.